Hey everyone, this is Lisa with Crate Myrtle Row. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to do a tea party garden using plates, cups, saucers, teapots, anything that's really related to tea parties. And I have a huge oak tree out back that I have a, a border, a bed built around it. And I'm lining around that flower bed with plates, just odd plates I've picked up at um, thrift stores for like 99 cents, something like that. And I'm taking teacups and saucers, gluing them together, gluing a coupling on it, and putting it on a pole so they're just standing up in the air. And taking teapots and putting them on hooks so it looks like they're pouring down into the cups. And um, I'm going to show you what parts I use to do that and then show you how I cut the, the poles. I'm going to spray paint my poles black. Um, I did a, a poll on or survey, so to speak, on Facebook on a couple of groups that I'm in asking opinions on painting the, the post, post black and I got an overwhelming response that everybody agreed that that would be um, better looking than just the white post because I'm using PVC pipe and it'll also give the appearance that they're kind of floating in the air. So if that is something you're interested in, stay tuned. I'll show you how to put it together now. Um, this video will be in stages because, of course, I have to let the glue really dry for about 24 hours um, before putting it outside. Plus, I have to paint my pots and I mean my post and everything. And but once I get it all done, I will take you out and give you a tour showing you all of it put together and actually put some of it together for you out there. So if you want to learn how to do this, just stay tuned. Okay, the things that I use to do this, let me grab one of my long posts, is a PVC pipe. Well, I've got one cut here already, I'll show you so you can see. It's a PVC pipe. This one is, what does it say? It's a half inch, I think, in diameter. I thought it said it on here. Yep, right there. Half inch. In diameter and these things are five feet tall I cut them in half so that I ended up with a shorter post like this because I need enough to, to pound down into the ground far enough to hold it but I don't want it um, too long and I may have to change you know once I get them in the ground with the teapots and stuff I may have to go back and cut some off the lint just to get the heights that I want but the way I cut mine is my husband has this handy little pipe cutting tool and I just marked off the, the length that I wanted, which is 30 inches, and just put this on here. I'll show you right quick, just to show you how easy that is to do, that you can do it yourself. Um, let me get one of my posts here. I'm going to mark off 30 inches. Just so I can make sure I put this where it is. And I mean, it doesn't have to be exact because, you know, you're not going to pound them all in the ground exactly. This little tool opens up. I just kind of get my hand out of the way here so you can see. Kind of line it up where I was going to, where I marked it. And then I just tighten up the knob here. And when it gets tight, it's got a little blade there, and you just start turning it. Let's turn it several times. You feel like it's cut through. Tighten it up just a little bit more, and keep turning it. And a little bit more, and turn it some more. You can, you can actually twist this around it too. And if you don't have one of these tools, I don't know how much they cost. My husband already had this one. But um, you can actually get someone at Lowe's to cut the pipe for you. You know, just tell them the lengths you want, and they will cut it for you. And just, and this is not hard to do. It just takes a little time to get through all the pipe. <laughs> I'm going to tear everything up over here. I can feel it 
just about through here. There we go. So then you get it cut. And you have your lance. Be very careful if you do use this tool because that blade is extremely sharp. So anyhow, that gives me my different lengths. And then what I'm putting on the end of these, it's a coupling or a bushing type thing. And I mean, it just has the holes on both sides. But if you feel inside, this side has a little edge in there and it's smaller than this size. And it's supposed to be a reducer of some sort. Anything you can find that this post to fit on and is flat would work. And then this just slides. Let me get the end I didn't cut there. There, that end. <laughs> As you can see, I had to fight with it because there's two different ends. The one with the edge on this, it fits over the pipe, but this end won't because it's made to reduce this down. Or this is the half inch and three quarters on that side or something like that. But I just, I took the post when I was in Lowe's. I walked around with all the little plumbing parts and that's where, what department I got this out of. And I just looked at what could I put on the end of this post that would sit on it good and then would be flat on this end that I could glue onto my things. And that's what I found. So I know some people even use copper. You can go find copper piping and copper pieces like this to do if you would rather that have that look. And then what I'm going to do to glue these on is I am using this Loctite um, clear silicone. It's a waterproof silicone. You can also, I have found in the past, use like the liquid nails in the clear silicone because they're all um, weatherproof, waterproof, and they, they're clear so you won't see them through your cups here. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do, get me a paper towel here because I tend to be messy, is I'm just going to take and glue it around the rim. And I put it pretty generously, you know, because I don't want it coming off and it kind of seals it off. Set that there. So you can see I got it around it. Just stick it into my saucer where I want it. I'm going to flip that over. And remember which end goes out on the pole. And on mine, it was the one with the little edge there. So the opposite end, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to run a bead of glue around it. And then press it down into the center of the plate. And I'm going to push that aside and let it dry. This cup I've already glued on a while back, but I did not put the coupling on. So I'm going to do that with this one too. My glue's falling down in my thing there. Just find your center and then just set them aside. If you have a teapot with a lid, what I did on this one is I've already glued the lid on and I just put like a little piece of clear tape over this part just to help it's not really going to weatherproof it over time. I'm sure that's going to get water in it, but it'll just help some. And this teapot's a little bit heavier. And see if I try to hang it, it's going to hang straight down like that. I have some out there that the handle comes up and hooks so that when it hangs, it hangs more at an angle like that. And that's what I prefer. So the ones that want, that want to hang like this, I'm going to actually just have them sitting straight up. And I'm going to show you another neat idea of something that you can do. Let me put the lid back on this. Um, for post that you might have, because you want things at different heights, I actually had some old solar lights. Like here's one that, that no longer works. And I don't know if y'all have tried to buy batteries for some of these, but the battery costs as much as the light does to go buy it new just about. So... I had several around my yard that, I mean, I had this one, I had one of these, I think these were like 
three dollar ones that no longer work and I got thinking well there's a post right there <laughs> I just I'm gonna spray paint it black but this one fit perfectly onto the bottom of that so then you see it'll be a stake and it'll be on the ground and this will all be black so I'm gonna use that one for that and then like I said I have this kind that I can paint all black and um, use on some of my other teapots and of course you could I can't do it on these these are smaller but you could you know glue this on the bottom of your saucer there because you can take that off because that's the main thing is you want to be able to possibly take or I do I want to be able to take the cups off and you know dump the water out if they get too much in them um, especially in colder weather. Now I live in South Carolina so we don't get very um, cold winters. We do have some freezing weather. I think when I know it's going to be um, below freezing I will bring at least the plates and stuff. I mean the cups and saucers in and my teapots in just out of the weather so I don't worry about water getting in there and freezing and busting them. I think the plates will be fine out there. They'll be standing on their um, on end so there's not like water's going to be setting on those much. I'll just have to play it by ear and see how it goes but I want mine removable. If you don't you know whatever method you use to glue this to that and put it in the ground works for me. <laughs> it works for you too. <laughs> so that's all I'm going to do there. Um, like I said I'm going to spray paint these posts. I'm going to spray paint this all and I found this um, matte black paint and I want to do it matte because I don't want any shine there to to draw attention to it I do want it to kind of disappear and I also have some little shepherd's hooks that I had picked up at the Dollar Tree years ago that are maybe three foot tall at the most I have a few of those out there I'm hoping to find some more that I'm hanging my teapots on um, if I don't, I'm just going to have to come up or, or look around and see if I can't find the shorter ones to, to do that with or come up with a different method. But that is what I'm going to show you now. When we come back, I will be out there showing you the actual garden itself and how to put it together. Okay, here we are. I'm going to show you the finished bed. It's been a few days since I put stuff together but here's the plates and there's how I have teapots hanging and I glued the lid onto that one and then the little plates there and I did end up painting my post black so they don't show up quite as much there's that one that's on one of those um, solar lights that no longer work Here's what the, the solar light, I, that one still works, so I left it there, but that one didn't, so I painted it black and glued that on. But we'll walk around. I still got some work to do, a little bit of weeding to do, and some mulch to put out. And um, <laughs> my neighbor's dog is treat a squirrel over there. <laughs> and I added me some more plants in here, a lot of the hookara, or corabels, as some may know it. And I've got just a few more spots for some plates, which I do have some more somewhere in my vast array of storage stuff. <laughs> I know I have them, so I will be getting those out and finishing up the little spot here. And what I do to put these in, continue around here, is I just take right here where they're at i take a little shovel a little hand shovel and dig a little trench and stick them in and then backfill the dirt back around them but um they're not in there tight see so you can you can turn them and stuff but there's another teapot on an old solar light and some more cups more of the plates I like this particular plate. It's from Georgia 
Atlanta, all kind of stuff. My husband's family, they're all from Georgia. Then this is another one that hangs. And remember me mentioning how the handle comes up and it makes it hang better like that? When they're straight down, they want to turn just straight down so it's a little harder. So that's the kind of like hanging like that. And I have a few more to put together and get back out here. But there's those plates. And that's pretty much it. If you see <laughs> my tree there, how it's got the little fairy door right there. I used to have a fairy garden in this one. Um, and that was one of the doors. And now it's where I nailed it on. It's stuck on there. I can't get it off. Along with part of the face of the tree. When I first put that on, I fought with it like crazy to keep it on there. Because the tree was growing so fast it would... You know grow over the nails or push them out and now they're stuck on i can't get off and i made the mistake of sitting them down inside let me show you this i think it's crazy with these trees i set them down here and forgot about them and over a couple seasons the tree grew around them that used to be a birdhouse that sat there and it finally crushed it and then there's a little ceramic fairy house that I set down in the crook of the tree and the tree's grown around it and it's now stuck in there and there's no getting it out I, I feel like it won't be too much longer before the tree will crush it too <laughs> but I love this huge oak tree and hopefully I won't have too many limbs fall down and break these but there again these plates and all for 99 cent maybe two to three dollars at the most that I paid for any of it so I don't have a whole lot of money if I lose one I can replace it pretty easily but that is it for that and I hope y'all have a very blessed day